All right, so before I start this review, a little update on uh, the channel. I am moving studio again, and for the ones who are keeping count, this is the third time in three months, uh, but hopefully the next move will be the last, and it's gonna be looking awesome. The new apartment we're getting is just absolutely gorgeous, so bear with me. This said, this country is getting hotter by the day. I'm still sweating. And that's also why I'm moving because this, this, this house has no real air conditioning. So that is exciting. But without further ado, let's jump right in the reason why we're here today. I am reviewing something which starts to become a trend, another laptop and for good reasons. Desktop computer components are still overpriced and hard to find. So obviously our laptops are the obvious and natural alternative. And in my quest to find the biggest bang for my buck, I have stumbled onto something both surprising and unique, the Acer Swift 3. And um, to be absolutely honest with you, I am not and never was a big Acer fanboy. And if you had asked me just a few years back, I would have probably preferred to have my tongue shaved by a Yugoslavian cheese scraper than owning one of those. So picture my surprise uh, when I'm finding myself reviewing an Acer laptop and loving it. Roll that intro. Acer, as it seems, has been focusing a lot of its resources in higher-end laptops and desktop computers, uh, but they're trying to do so keeping prices affordable. And that is something which usually fails indespicably. I don't know what that word means, but you catch my drift, don't you? Um, every time a manufacturer tries to give you something more for less, they are doing this at the expense of power or size or battery or something is doomed to absolutely fail. But that was before the Swift series from Acer. Swift. Now that's a very difficult word to pronounce when you when you're sweating and you're French and your teeth go one way and your tongue on the other hand of your mouth, it's difficult to swift. Acer released the Swift family of laptops going from one to three. I should just say one, two, and three. The Swift one being the most affordable and the Swift three, the more powerful and more expensive models. And luckily today we are reviewing the higher end, the Swift three. So uh, let's go straight to the obvious. All of the Swift laptops are 34 centimeter wide, 23.6 centimeter deep for 1.7778 centimeter high or 1.78 for yeah, 1.78. And as the weight goes, the Swift 3 is ultra light at 1.65 kilograms. Staying in the obvious, it is equipped with a 14 inch IPS full HD screen, boasting a pixel density of 157 pixels per inch. It has a matte anti glare treatment to avoid those annoying shiny reflections which come and pollute our screen real estate. Ah. Though I am not a big fan of the surrounding basil, which is really really big it is definitely a great all-rounder it has a very strong backlight it's very very shiny it's clear the pixel density is absolutely great and it'll cover a wide range of utilities such as your emailing word stuff without actually seeing pixelization and in same time you can do more precise work such as adobe photoshop and adobe premiere or even hand high up high up high end gamings gamers games Going down a little, we have a beautiful keyboard. And you know, when it comes to laptops, it is really important for me, and I think for a lot of you, to have a great keyboard. I need to feel comfort, precision, and reliability at every single touch. And Acer has delivered. I, I remember really not liking the keyboards back in the days, but that one absolutely blew my mind. It is well spaced, the keys are big enough, and even when you press on the corner of a key, it always registers the right letter. So yes, I was absolutely fascinated and impressed by the quality of the keyboard. The mouse pad is large and agreeable to the touch and plenty of space even for those hot dog students. On its right, let's not miss the finger scanner. It, it took a split of a second to log me in, and even when I tried to kind of play with it and put my finger on the side and try to cheat, it did register me. Well, I know uh, what you're thinking, that maybe it's just gonna register any finger. No, that it only registered the 
finger I had registered, anything else would not work, but it was clever enough to identify the fingerprint even if I came in diagonal or a little bit of an angle. So yes, second to none, awesome, let's move on. All right, so let's jump inside the machine. The review model I have received had a Coffee Lake i5 8250U coupled with its own dedicated NVIDIA MX150 GPU. Worth noting, it does come with its very own two gigabyte of GDDR5 RAM. Yeah, so yes, finally some real Coffee Lake integration. Even though it's been almost, what, seven or eight months it's been released onto the market, Coffee Lake has been slow to integrate and penetrate the laptop market. And for the rest, nothing out of the ordinary. We had 8GB of DDR4 RAM and 256GB of M.2 Solid State Drive Yarminess. And the result is a perfect harmony between those four components. The fact that we have no mechanical hard drive and very, very low latency uh, interaction between the processors, the GPU, the RAM and the Solid State Drive makes it a bliss and a monster of performance on a very, very low wattage. This little machine is a powerhouse. But how powerful is it really, you may ask? Well, fun fact for you, this entire video has been uh, produced, edited, and rendered on it. Really? Yeah, for real. Uh, how long did it take? Yeah, but man, like, did you just interrupt me to ask me those kind of questions? Jesus, calm down. Right, did you stop the music as well? I did. Dude, you know I don't like that. You okay, know, sorry. You know, it breaks my flow. All right, gets chill. Me out of my thing. Fine, dude. All right. Okay. Well, uh, so moving on. Most importantly, during the benchmarking, the Swift 3 managed to stay cool and almost silent. Peripheral-wise, we have, starting from the left, an HDMI 1.4 port, a USB 3.1 second generation Type-C, which can swap data up to 10 gigabit per second, two USB 3.1 first generation with five gigabit per second of data transfer each, our headphone audio jack, on the other side of our laptop we have a keystone lock, a USB second generation, and a SD card reader. Webcam wise we have a 720p camera which tends to go on the dark side of things, but other than that was very, very sharp and more than satisfactory for whatever you want to do with a webcam. And right next to it, a small directional microphone. Again, nothing much there. It works for your usual Skype and other communication things that you want to do on this. Okay, so here comes a very, very important point, the battery life. Um, you know, in the beginning I said that a lot of manufacturers try to deliver something cheap but always sacrifice on battery life or anything. This is not the case. I am not sure how Acer pulled it off, knowing uh, the, 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 the quality of the components, knowing the wattage of the components, uh, but my model, the model I've used and which I drained seven times in a week, uh, gave me on average usage, Wi-Fi, YouTube, etc. Uh, more than seven hours of life. And, and, and that's something I haven't seen often. That's the only model I could experience the same thing was on the MacBook Air, which anyway, I'm not a big fan of. And that was on an Atom processor. And here we're running on uh, an i5 8th generation with its dedicated GPU. So I'm not sure how they did it, uh, but yeah, it's here, it's extremely impressive. I did run a test with pure gaming and, and intensive tasks such as Adobe Premiere, and it gave me anywhere between four and five hours, so much more than I anticipated. And so if you're going, for example, for a class or a long meeting, uh, yeah, you're pretty much covered. Um, you're probably gonna have to recharge once during the day. But again, definitely the best out there right now with this kind of components, this kind of weight, and this kind of, of battery life. That's all Acer needed to get right, and they did. Okay, so the street price of the reviewed model we had today goes anywhere between $6.99 and $7.99 US dollars, and I'm you know, I keep wrapping my head uh, on how Acer delivered such a product at this price point, because again, they did not sacrifice on anything. Uh, the finish, I didn't talk about the finish. The quality of build is absolutely stunning. The all aluminum brush is gorgeous. It gives this expensive touch and feel and look to the whole product. The components are nothing else but premium. The battery life is 
stellar. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on and on. I'm absolutely amazed. And of course, there is a couple of things that I did not adore. Um, I think that, you know, touch screen would have been a good touch. Uh, the basil around the screen, again, not great. And I, I, I tend to prefer higher um, definition, higher resolution screens like a 2K. But again, you're talking about 699 to 7, 800 bucks. That's this computer brings much, much more on the table than any of its competitor. And not only does it bring a lot, but it does it well. You can feel the harmony. You can feel there's been a serious focus on engineering. And you can definitely tell that Acer is taking itself much more seriously and finally catching up on the competition. So um, if you're on the market for a new laptop, something was versatile, uh, portable and powerful and crazy battery life, Boom, right here, right there, right now. All right.